Hey folks, Nicholas here, and I've got my son Theo beside me. Hi. How old are you, Theo? Four. Four. And today, we're going to try to build... Oh, a 3D printer. A 3D printer. Now, 3D printers have come a long way since I built my first one about five or six years ago. I built a Prusa Mark II, and it was a lot of fun, a lot of hard work. I learned a lot. My first prints were awful. No good. And I eventually managed to get it to a place where I was getting good prints out of my FDM printer. I kept having challenges, I kept having issues because 3D printing, well, it's not that easy. So recently, Creality contacted us at PlayOn and wanted to send us one of the brand new 3D printers that they've made. So they wanted to send us an Ender 5 S1. And I wanted to see how far printing technology has come and whether someone even as young as my son could understand it. <laughs> Let's go. So Theo. This is the kind of thing we're going to build today. Yeah. You ready for help me? Okay. Ugh. Have you seen this before? No. You know what this is, right? A 3D printer. This is, this is Daddy's 3D printer, right? And uh, does it look complicated? No. Do you know how to use it? No. Do you want to learn? Yes. Okay. Let's do it. We don't do a lot of hobby videos on our channel, but we do do a lot of hobbying. Most of the armies on our channel, we painted ourselves, and most of the terrain, we've either made ourselves or come from sponsors. FDM printers themselves, the ones that do filament, are really good at making terrain, like this stuff from War Scenery, fantastic stuff. I've been really enjoying printing it. This one is a very older model, so I'm really curious to see what a newer model might do. We just had this giant box! It's really heavy. Plus a sonic pad. I'm not sure what that is. That might be like the touchpad of how to control it. And extra filament. So we've got lots of filament. What filament? Filament. Filament is uh, basically a string of plastic that goes into the 3D printer. It melts it and then puts it into a shape. That's how you make that stuff. Now in full transparency, we have not been paid for this video. Creality did send this to us for free but we are under no obligation to say anything specifically about it. So, I'm actually just really curious to see if it'll do any good. If it'll do better than my current Ender. Man, it looks like, I thought I was gonna have to assemble way more of this. Most of this is already assembled for us. This is fantastic. This looks like a much higher tech version than my old one. My old one was pretty basic. Here, open this for me. When I assembled my Prusa, I had to assemble it all from scratch. So looking at this, this actually might take me a lot less time than I thought it would. Uh, when I built my Prusa, everything came in small little parts down to the nut and bolt and I had to assemble everything from scratch. It taught me a lot about how to build a 3D printer and what went into it, but it was a lot of work, probably multiple day project. This doesn't look like that. Most of the pieces seem assembled and the tech level here seems way higher. This is an Ender 5 S1, and it retails online Canadian from about 600 Canadian to about 800 Canadian, depending on what settings you choose. They also sent me a Creality Sonic Pad, which I'm not exactly sure what this is, but essentially from their marketing, it appears to be the equivalent of like an iPad that connects to the 3D printer. It's supposed to help speed up the print, but also let you monitor it in real time. Uh, it runs you about 200 bucks. Um, I'm curious to see how that works. I own an old Ender 2, but I bought it used, already pre-assembled, so I didn't get to assemble that one. But it, but it's a pretty basic printer. It's kind of your run-of-the-mill one you can buy from Amazon or elsewhere, where people buy it for like a couple hundred dollars. Sometimes they buy three or four of them, and they sits in their basement and cranks out terrain. Hobbyists and terrain builders love the Ender for that reason because it's cheap. Now in the past, I have heard reports of it because it's cheap, it uses cheap components, and so people are worried about things like, is it safe, can you leave it for long periods of time unattended, and stuff like that. On a cursory glance, the product looks more professional. The product looks like a much higher quality build between the components, the bolts, the connectors, and all that stuff, so I'm hoping this is a much better printer. And it's supposed to print dramatically faster than the old Ender 2 I have, so we might, we might have to do a race later on. Well, the printer is done. Thank you so much for my boys for helping me out. Thanks, guys. High fives. Nice. <laughs> Beginning of the video, I really wanted to find out if this printer was a little bit easier to assemble than my last one, which took me almost two and a half days, and had I had to use every ounce of my mechanical skill to try to figure it out. But I literally assembled this one in an hour, 
And although maybe a four-year-old couldn't do it by themselves, my six and seven-year-old could probably handle it. <laughs> now that it's built, I really want to test how fast it is. The build plate is about the same size as the old Ender 2, but it's supposed to be considerably faster. So, let's have a race. Well, obviously, the newer one did finish quite significantly ahead of my older Ender 2, and I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with it. It was really easy to level the bed, it was really easy to assemble, and it does feel like the technology has come leaps and bounds. I will say, I'm not sold on this thing yet. This is the Sonic pad from Creality. They sent it to me. It's basically supposed to act as a different interface device for the printer. I guess it can act for multiple interfaces, but I had the printer working fine, and then I plugged it in, and then I had to re-level everything. And yes, it did end up re-leveling everything faster, but it took me a lot longer to set it up, so I I don't know if it's worth it. This, this printer did feel worth it. I'm looking forward to printing some more terrain with it. It didn't seem any worse or better quality of the actual print than any other printer I've used before. It seems like it just comes down to making sure your settings are correct. But what I will say is that it looks nice, it was easy to assemble, it's easy to use, and it does feel like a very modern tool rather than a do-it-yourself that some of the older printers often feel like. For many people, 3D printing is a hobby unto itself, and that's kind of the caution for many people that if you're gonna get into 3D printing, yes, it's cool, and you can print all sorts of awesome stuff, but you gotta be prepared to do all the legwork to make sure you're prepared. Now, I came into this with a lot of knowledge of 3D printers and how they work and how they can go together, so I feel, so I, feel I was able to set myself up for success already, but if you're looking for your first printers, the Ender Series seems like a decent way to go. I'm definitely looking towards putting this machine through its paces and printing off a lot more terrain for our games. Thanks for watching. Consider liking, commenting, and letting us know what you think and what printers you're using these days. And a special thanks to Creality for sending this to us. I'm actually pretty happy with it as a printer, so thank you very much. And to War Scenery for sending us these awesome terrain designs for Star Wars Legion and Warhammer 40K. From all of us here at Play On, thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed that little look at the world of 3D printing. And until we see you next time, Play On.